my friend. My name is Terry Petrovic, and for the past 25 years, I've been teaching, coaching, and training people how to create a better quality of life through a home-based business. Uh, today, I got to tell you, I live the lifestyle that most people can only dream about, but it hasn't always been that way. You see, I believe that success and prosperity have a lot to do with our philosophies, our programming on a conscious and unconscious level, and I think all of us at some point in time need to go outside of ourselves and we need to ask good questions and listen to people who have created more than we have. Uh, my question for you is, is this, why is it that maybe some people that you know in your company or do the same thing that you do if you have a coaching business or real estate business, why is it that they might be doing 10, 20, 100 times more than you are? You're working hard, but you're just not creating that success that you want. Well, in this series, Prosperity and the Mentors, you're going to be learning from some of the best mentors that I've found on the planet, people who have created prosperity and abundance. And you might be surprised when you hear their journey on where they came from and more importantly, how they got to where they are. So we're gonna be sharing their personal habits, their tools, their philosophies, the challenging times, as well as what they do to stay on track to create success, prosperity, happiness, and fulfillment. My guest today is an absolute trailblazer for women in business. Uh, she's been awarded the Gold Seabold Certified uh, Speaker Award. She's a uh, life and success coach. She spent, gosh, I bet over 10 years teaching the timeless principles of Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. She's logged over 14,000 hours teaching people. She's on a mission, and this is what I love about her, she's on a mission to crush the, the gap, the wage gap, if you will, um, from 2025 to compress that by 30 years. And what she does is, is she teaches primarily women, and she'll say, a few smart men, <laughs> how to ask for what they deserve and then be paid for that. She's an Amazon uh, bestseller with two books, her first champion, the unofficial version of Think and Grow Rich for Women, and her most recent book, which I absolutely loved, uh, Own Your Purpose and Realize Your Potential. She's uh, known as a nanapreneur, a uber nana, and she has absolutely create, created a, uh, a magical life that is really one by design. And that's what I want for you. Uh, my guest today is Leslie Flowers. Leslie, thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you. Uh, happy to be here, and thanks for inviting me, Terry. Well, you have got so much wisdom and, you know, I talk to a lot of mentors and coaches and um, you have just a very uh, a simple but profound way of getting to the, the meat of where people are. And I know that you've done um, masterminds with people for, I think you said, 22 consecutive quarters. Is that right? This last, for women, yes, this last round is, we're now in our 22nd consecutive business quarter. That's amazing. That's amazing. So take people a little bit behind the, the curtain and share your maybe before story and where you are now and kind of like maybe where you came from and how you created the success uh, that you've done on a global basis, which is amazing. Well, thank you. Um, so I've always led a charmed life. So I've always been an adventurer and I've always been pretty much aim, fire, and then maybe get ready, right? So I, I did a lot of adventuring. I went to San Francisco State, sang in a rock band in the 60s, uh, took a job as a stewardess flying troops into and out of Vietnam because my goal was to get over to Southeast Asia without having to invest. So I could work my way over and I lived down the street from Janis Joplin and saw all the bands of the 60s, right? Uh, they were all in my back door, so to speak. And then I married and was married for 30 years, moved from San Francisco to North Carolina, where I am now and have been all this time, two children, four grandchildren, 
you know, but life it seems, it always seemed charmed to me. Whenever I wanted something, if I wanted it enough, I got it. Um, and when my marriage broke up, right around 2000, I started doing some intensive personal development training. I had already done landmark education. I went and did their whole curriculum again because I spent a couple of years working in corporate, but I was not getting over my 30 year marriage. And one day I picked myself up and said, that's enough, right? We have two ways to go. Either we kill ourselves or we move forward eventually. And I did think about killing myself and I don't think I'm unusual. Uh, for people who have been married all these years and if both partners don't want to work it out and in my case I was a lioness and wanted to keep my 30-year marriage together but my ex-husband did not so we we had to part ways and so for two years I sat in the dark but then I threw myself into the stuff that made me feel good I did all landmarks work I studied quantum physics metaphysics whatever caught my eye then in 2007, The Secret came out, and I have a 45-year corporate career. I saw The Secret, and oh boy, did that pique my interest. <laughs> it was right up my alley. I was ready for the law of attraction. Because all my life, pretty much anything I wanted, I got. I mean, yes, I had a very big low with the dissolution of my marriage, but what I know now is, that every low and the depth of it has a matching high and the height that matches. So once you realize this and you've seen it happen, when you're in the lows, you immediately start looking for the high because the universe will give that to you. So um, I got all involved in meetup and had the, a meetup group called The Secret Society. And every month we meet, we talk about the secret and the practices and the practitioners and had law of attraction fairs, right? I didn't need money because I was working, you know, so this was all just fun and games. And then through an errant email, late 2007, which you shouldn't open, and if it has a link, <laughs> you still shouldn't open it. Uh, I had been asking kind of secretly boy, this is fun. I wonder if I could be paid for it because I'm leaving these monthly things and I majored in drama at San Francisco State. So I was just enjoying myself. This Aaron email came in, long story short, popped over to Bob Proctor's website. Very simple website. This was 2007. Bob Proctor, Paul Martinelli was CEO of Life Success at that time. And I called. So the key here is when you get an idea, move immediately and take the first couple of steps so you can see what happens. Do not allow yourself to start thinking about all the reasons why it can't happen to you. I just did it. Now, that was at the end of 2007. And I have to tell you, in my Edward Jones bank account, I had $500. Right? Okay. So... <laughs> I was feeling good, right? And, and But here's what happened. They, they told me that I would do masterminds based on thinking grow rich. I said, what's a mastermind and what the age is thinking grow rich? So I had no clue. They said, well, you'll come to West Palm Beach in March and we'll train you. We'll send you up all the material you need. You just follow the notebook and you teach thinking grow rich. Paul Martinelli was genius. He wrote that. And uh, I said, okay, well, of course, the big question, right? What's the investment? And she said $16,000. And I said, great, I'll be there. <laughs> and I hung up the phone. Now, you know what I had. But all my life, whenever I really, 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 really wanted something, I got it. That's all I thought about. And honestly, a windfall, a, a stop windfall came Early in 2008, and I was in West Palm Beach, I had started my first mastermind. I've done over 100 now. So that, that was in 2008, and for the last 10 years, all my work has been around universal laws, um, the uh, principles of success, and then my own works. Because if you teach and write and study 
for 10 years on one subject, you become an expert and you can teach from that. So that's kind mm -hmm. of how I got here. Is this a good pause point? <laughs> I got you this yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great story. So let me ask you this question um, today. Um, what's your definition of prosperity? Hmm, that's a great question. You know, I don't know that anybody's ever asked me that. Prosperity, I think of wealth, but I don't think wealth and prosperity are exactly the same. Prosperity is some is wealth, health, and happiness that is reliable and predictable and pretty consistent. To live a prosperous life, you would want to be happy, healthy, and wealthy while you're navigating your obstacles because you always have them. That would be prosperity for me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, it makes total sense. It's it's Some people, when they first start thinking about it, it's money, but then... It's more than money. It's health. It's relationships. It's um, uh, fulfillment. I think, and yeah. and who you are, and who you are becoming. Because uh, I think that's all uh, an exciting thing. So, just curious, um, do you have any morning or evening rituals uh, that you follow consistently? Well, evening, not really. Um, when people ask me what time I go to bed, I say which time. Right, because I go to bed at 10 and at 3, right? Morning, two glasses of filtered water and a cup of coffee every morning. First, the two glasses of water. Then I treat myself to the cup of coffee. That is my ritual. Now, very often, it will include, followed by that, um, catching up with people that I've worked with, right? So I have an office block from 9 to 11, that's mm -hmm. pretty much it for my morning routine, yeah. Okay. Um, is there a, um, a book or an item that you find yourself consistently giving away to people? Well, yeah. Before I had my own bestsellers, I always gave away Think and Grow Rich, the edited version by my very dear friend and mentor, Ross Cornwell, who was the first – editor of the Napoleon Hill Foundation newsletter. He has been with me as a mentor over this 10 years. And I say mentor, I don't think we pay mentors, at least for me, I never paid him a dime. And yet in the most challenging times, Ross, who faced a lot of challenges himself, producing Think and Grow Rich, right? helped me when I ran into the politics of uh, big money, if you will. So when I wrote my book, Champion, 21st Century Women, Guardians of Wealth and Legacy, it was in Women in Business on Amazon and a bestseller. And it really is the synthesis of thinking grow rich in 21st terms for women. So rather than all the purple prose and the hundred and how many ever 200 pages, Everything is listed in bullet points and also includes my own teachings. Between 2009 and 2012, I wrote 75 teaching pieces as I moved through dozens of masterminds and continued to teach this work. So the, I give that book away. And now with the new bestseller, I'll be giving that away. You know, you never know. Uh, that's your $5 business card, isn't it? There you go. I love it. I love it. Um, what purchase for $100 or less in the last six months has had the biggest impact on you? $100 or less. That's tough. I can only say that it's something to do with my grandchildren, right? I do that. I have date night with them. So I can't think of anything for $100 or less that I've purchased that has impacted my life more than having a date night once every couple of months with one of my four grandchildren. And my budget is $80 and they know it.
and they're very clever <laughs> at how to spend that eighty dollars. <laughs> Kids are good about that, and you know, there's something oh, about you know. Eighty is easy. They're thirteen, thirteen, eleven, and ten, so they're excellent with money. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Let's let's um, dive in a little bit deeper to prosperity and maybe where people are. Has okay. has there been a time um, recently, and you can decide how big that window is, where maybe you struggled with um, prosperity thinking or abundant thinking, and if so, how did you manage it or deal with it to make it a more positive thing? Well, I'll give you something that happened yesterday. Because, you know, just because we, many of us, know this work thoroughly and we've created programs, right, and we help other people all the time, doesn't mean that we don't face the same issues that everyone else does. The only difference is we know exactly what to do to get out of it. Remember I said when you're in a low point, right, there's always a matching high point. It's kind of the law of rhythm. It actually is the law of rhythm. You don't know exactly when the high point is coming, but you know it is, and it will match the intensity of the low point. So you could look at prosperity thinking the same way. So I'm doing a very large event. Yesterday I did a quick interview with a lovely gal who wanted to talk to me about my latest book. And we connected as we do. So once the eight minute interview was over, we got into a conversation. I have a large event. I have put, coming up in November, I have put everything in place. In fact, it's top heavy. There is so much already done, right? Um, and there are like 23 sponsors. So what I was doing, I didn't have prosperous thinking because, and I chatted with this woman about it, and she was able to help me see that I was being responsible for every seat being filled rather than allowing each of the five other speakers and the 20, 18 or 19 sponsors to be responsible for their own success. Now in that moment, the prosperity thinking came back because I thought it was my job. I felt, and I was worried. As soon as I stopped worrying, new ideas came, and now I'm not worried. Whoever is there will get the gift, right? I've done everything I can do. It's up to each other individual to create their own prosperity and their own success. So there's one from yesterday. I love it. I love it. Thank yep. you. Uh, all you have to really do is, is let go sometimes in uh, the universe – provides and, and it takes another person though really i mean so we and that's okay all, it's yeah. okay yeah well yeah. you know most people are afraid you know it just felt right and i just met this woman right but it just felt right to ask her this question just felt right and in my masterminds there's a very specific accountability program and in accountability you're really coaching each other you're mm -hmm. listening for what the other person isn't seeing so that you can tell them what you're seeing, that they can get greater, right? Because we can't see everything. So right. I actually used her as an accountability partner, and actually I gave her something too in return, so it worked out very well. Awesome. How has a failure, Leslie, or maybe a mistake in the past set you up for later success? <laughs> Well, the 30-year marriage, right, that was just devastating. I'm sure there are women out there in long-term marriages. I'm a boomer, right? I, I had two kids. That My kids were the only ones pretty much in high school that had both parents. We stayed together. The children appreciated it. It was rock bottom for me. You know, it was when, when I thought about driving off a bridge, I'd never thought that before. I could not accept it. And my ex said to me, one day you'll thank me. <laughs> of course, you don't want to hear that right then. And now I thank him all the time. Um, what happened was after those two years of sort of licking my wounds and having pity parties and talking bad about him and, you know, just being on the lowest level of awareness, fight or flight, it's his fault and not my fault, what a shit, you know, like that. 
And I think that's okay to get that out of your system. Um, that's when I finally said, that's enough. And I started doing all the things that I love doing. And interestingly, many of those things were things that he didn't support me in. So it was almost like it kind of was a gift, but I didn't recognize it at that time. I just began doing what I was drawn to, what made me feel good, right? And what I've learned is that learning is our miracle grow. Because we have conscious awareness and we can constantly make ourselves more aware of our potential, which is darn near infinite if we can have a quadriplegic climb Mount Kilimanjaro, right? That is what learning does for us. If you look at kids when they're learning and they get a concept, you know, there's a light in their eyes. So I threw myself into learning. But remember, I was in corporate, so money was never an issue for me until I retired and had to create a business and there was no income coming in and then it became challenging. So once I knew, Terry, that my mission was to close the wage gap and that was an awakening too. I had been teaching Napoleon Hill's Thinking Grow Rich and Wallace Waddle's Science of Getting Rich and oh, some of Bruce. Um, Bruce Lipton's, you know, a little bit of he, that, a little bit of Richard Brody, Virus of the Mind, um, uh, uh, Genevieve Berend, right, Your Invisible Power, Thomas Troward. I just loved all that stuff. At some point, however, I decided that it was time to earn some money. So mm. I started charging for my mastermind. I didn't charge the first few years because I didn't think that it was fair to have people who were allowing me to become an expert in an industry, right? They were giving me their time so I could practice on them, right? I didn't think it was fair to charge them, but eventually I did. And um, I kind of forgot where we were, so bring me back. Well, we we're, we're talking about how failures set you up for later successes. Oh, yeah. And so what is success? So what is success? Um, a few years after the separation and divorce, um, I had been eyeing a house on a little lake in Cary, North Carolina. And my, I couldn't buy it because of my, um, my credit record, right? When you get divorced, things happen. So, but I knew the woman who lived near there. there. And so for five years, I drove by that house. It would be mine. It would be mine. And my friend bought it. And a couple of years later, she died. Mm. Well, I couldn't go back there for a year. So on the fifth year, I drove down the road and her son had just put out the for sale sign. And I bought the house. I lived there for eight years. Then my grandchildren who lived far away, or when I say far away, uh, one was... 50 minutes and one was 30 minutes and they're growing. And also Carrie is getting all, you know, a lot of traffic and the HOA was giving me aggravation. So finally last, uh, last year, last year was a perfect time. I sold that dream, but five years I visualized it. Right. Then I think about it. How long, how long will you visualize something and hold it top of mind until you get it? So then the next step was sell that. And now I live five minutes from one child and 20 minutes from another. That's so awesome. now I get to be Uber Nana, right? And a, a Nanapreneur, which means that I'm an entrepreneur who builds in grandchildren time into my schedule, just like client appointments. That is success for me. Success is doing exactly what I love. People are getting incredible and extraordinary results consistently over these 22 quarters. I make enough money. I'm not tremendously wealthy. I want to be to expand my reach and the, the work that I teach. Right. And there'll be some good things for me too. Absolutely. And so, and then that's for me, that is a successful life. Um, I just got everything around me. The only thing that I don't have, is that partner to share all those memories with. 
And perhaps that's the biggest takeaway as a long-term marriage survivor. It really isn't about money or material things. It's about all those beautiful war stories when the kid did this and the kids did that. So I tell them to my grandchildren. Right. Well, that leads me to my next question. Um, How important is meditation and maybe visualization in the prosperity building process? Because you already kind of talked about the visualization for five years to get the house. Mm -hmm. Um, Any insights there? Well, yeah, sure. Um, It's important, but it's not alone. So like an affirmation, like a vision board, like visualization, that can't be the only thing that you do. It's kind of like when The Secret came out, you know, <clears throat> people were wild about the law of attraction. Well, that's a subset of one of seven laws. So if it doesn't work, what if there were other laws that were working that you didn't know about? Does that mean because you didn't know about them, they aren't working? So we, we were missing information. So now ask me that question again. So the question really is, is how important is meditation and visualization in yeah. creating, in the, in, the, in the creating process of prosperity, whether it's, it's money or relationships like you were talking about? Mm-hmm. So for me, meditation, the first time I ever really meditated was this past Saturday. Really? Never actually really meditated. I was led on a meditation and I actually, actually felt like that was it. But you know, what is meditation? Is it how much time you spend focused on one thing? I mean, you know, in meditation, you're focusing on your breath, if I'm not mistaken, as a novice. So in thinking grow rich, you've got to have a definite purpose. That is the absolute most important thing you can do is to have a very clear vision of what you want and why you want it. Don't right. do anything else if you don't have that first. What is it going to make available? Because you must fall in love with it. And one of the ways that you fall in love with it is by visualizing, writing about it, thinking about it, discussing it with your accountability partner, talking about it in your mastermind, holding it top of mind. But it, it's usually a few months. I'm going to be honest with you. That's the minimum. You know, if you look at... Uh, Edwin Barnes, uh, who (laughs) sat in Edison's lab for five years, this is out of Thinking Grow Rich, um, and he had had come to Edison's door to um, go into business with Edison. And Edison brought him in and put him in the lab. Um, And it took five years before Edison came up with the Edifone, which is the precursor to the Dictaphone, and all the salespeople poo-pooed it, oh, this will never sell. And because... Barnes had been thinking about it and held the vision and had been in love with it all these years. He stepped up and every Edifone said, manufactured by Edison, installed by Barnes. So to answer your question, visualization is one of the ways that you must keep what it is you want top of mind in spaced, consistent intervals over time, not just on Mondays not just on the third Thursday of each month. It is the one thing, and the thing with men and women is that I've learned, is that men are better at focusing on one thing. Women come out of uh, our background after 200 generations, focusing on a lot of things, making sure everybody gets across the finish line. So really that's the first challenge I have with my women clients is, then giving themselves permission to take everything off their plate but the one thing that they're going to do this quarter. So yes, visualize. Yes, do a vision board. Yes, have an accountability partner. Yes, continue learning. Yes, get in a mastermind. Do something besides the vision work. It's not enough. It's Think about when you were a little kid, okay? Think of a two-year-old. It's supper time, and they want a chocolate chip cookie they will climb up on the counter. You can say, no, 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 it's supper time. You can't have that. They'll be up like this looking at you as you tell them no. They will climb up. Oh, well, you're not going to get any dessert tonight. They don't care. And, and they will not stop. I don't care what the threats are until they hold the cookie in their hand. 
we can learn a lot from two-year-olds. Mm. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so my, my next question, you might have just answered it, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Okay. Um, what advice would you give somebody when they maybe, they feel like they're stuck financially, perhaps they are 50 or 60 years old, or they think they can't change their future. They started a business before, whether it be a, you know, a network marketing business or real estate or a coaching and didn't really have success. And it's kind of like they keep going up and keep getting knocked back down. Mm -hmm. um, any wisdom or advice that you would give to them? Sure. Well, the three steps forward and two steps back is natural. Okay. It's part of the law of rhythm. So again, everything kind of goes like this. You're going to have ups and downs. If the advice is go back, to why it is, you're go what it is, and why you're going after whatever it is. Go back to your definite purpose. When you lose excitement, when you when your thinking gets kind of muddy, right? Because you know the old conversation is coming up. Well, you're not smart enough. Nobody wants to listen to you. Um, you failed so many times. Why don't you just play it safe? That would be smart. Don't rock the boat. Right? It's other people that are going to be successful, not you. We all have those. The trick is to overwrite them, kind of like what we did with discs, right? Because they will never leave you. But those beliefs have been with you since before you were six years old, most of them, before you reach the age of reason. They are the beliefs of other people. And in my work, I have learned how to create very simply a new belief and whatever it is you believe in your heart of hearts you will achieve positive or negative so the first thing to do is go back you might have outgrown that goal you may honestly not really want to do it when you go back to look at why and what it'll make available to you it's okay if it changed you're growing all the time so you're allowed right, to go three steps forward and two steps. Commend yourself that you're continuing to move forward because the opposite is slipping back <clears throat> or get letting, allowing it to get worse. Just keep moving forward, but revisit what it is you want and why you want it and be sure that you still want it. And if you do, spend some time there. Visualize already having it right? As though you already have achieved it because the whole point is to fall in love with it. Love is the highest vibration and it's the quickest way to create a new belief. So you want to pick something you want very, very, very much, not something you need, something you want a lot and why you want it. Really think about that. Get inside of, you know, that beach house that I can bring all my grandkids to, right? And I don't look at the beach house down the road, I'm walking around barefooted and the floors have just been varnished and it's sticky. And there, a, a seagull just pooped on the deck. I'm going to have to clean that up before the grandkids get it. That will raise your vibration. It makes it more alive in you. You're sending a message to the universe that this is where you're headed. And the cool thing is not a lot of people do this, but every human being can do this. So it's, it all starts with what you want and why you want it. And is it something that you could fall in love with? Mm -hmm. And if it's a yes, yes, and yes, give yourself permission to go three steps forward and two steps back. If you need to change, talk to someone. How talk important is um, maybe um, trying to redefine who you are so that you can create the thing that's so important. And I love that uh, it's gotta be something that pulls you forward that you get really excited and passionate about. But oftentimes I think people, again, going back to their limiting beliefs, um, they don't think they're good enough, smart enough, worthy enough, whatever. Um, how important is it to really, if you had a magic wand that could redefine you as an individual, does that play a role in that whole visualization process? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, just on first thought, <clears throat> because this whole thing is a process. 
and you're developing confidence and as you do you're developing your authentic self so what i've learned from my clients is that confidence is a muscle that grows in direct proportion to its use and the way you use it is by achieving tasks goals intentions in space consistent intervals over time the more you do that the more your confidence grows you start to realize hey not only did I do that, but I'm darn good at it. Um, you know, people always said to me over the last 20 years, Leslie, you ought to brand yourself. What's your brand? Right? That's a big one, right? Oh, you've got to be branded. Well, I will tell you, I was branded two years ago for the first time. And if I had branded hurt? myself, huh? I said, did it hurt? <laughs> um, yes, actually, but it's in a hidden spot. <laughs> Just for a little while now, right? I got it, I got it, just for a short while. No, actually, branding would hurt for a long time. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, as I, I could imagine. So if I had branded 10 years ago, I would have had to redo it again. If I had branded five years ago, I would have had to redo it again. It's only two years ago that I sat down with friends who are branding specialists and had intensive meetings with them to get to who I am. I can't figure that out for myself. They did it with me by asking me questions. So I think that becoming authentic wherever you are, rather than being authentic in business and being a different person in family, we all do this, being a different person at church, being a different person in the community, boy, how cool would it be to be yourself no matter where you are? Yeah. That is what takes all this time. So I don't, I think it, it's going to happen through your growth in awareness that you actually have infinite potential and you continue to prove it to yourself. And honestly, even when you've proven it to yourself, we tend to second guess that. Even when we see signs of faith that what we want is right in front of us through opportunities and people that have shown up to give us, to answer the questions we want and to give us what we need, that is proof of faith of how the universe works and yet we still question Oh, it must be a coincidence. It's not. So I'm not sure you ever know who you are completely. And, and I don't know that I ever want to until the very end. Mm. Because I'm continuing to learn, moving toward mastery as much as I can, and then I fall down and cut someone off in traffic. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because yep. I can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the, the, the human experience. So... Um, was that and, the answer you were, did you, was that the answer you thought you would get? Um, that was a great answer. Thank it you. makes total sense. It makes total sense to me. Um, let's say somebody buys into all this prosperity thinking and they've read thinking grow rich in the science of getting rich. And, uh, they go to, you know, seminars, they go to live events, they get into it and are all excited. And then, life happens and they stop. What action steps or what advice would you give that person to really maybe draw that final line and really get serious about creating more for themselves? Well, if you do a lot of seminars and reading, at some point you have to stop and create your own stuff. I've seen a lot of people that follow Proctor and all sorts of other people ad nauseum, right? I mean, I used his name and his material for a couple of years because I wasn't known. But as soon as I was able to create my own, I stepped from behind his skirts or slacks, as you will, right? I've studied with Brendan Bouchard, you know, and for a year or so, right, I was all about Brendan. And uh, so what happens, there's a couple of things that happen. One, you were sold the dream and you really didn't want it, mm. right? So a lot of these programs, honestly, um, they are run by people who are very proficient in sales. And we love the dream, and we all want to be prosperous, right? And we all want to live the life we've imagined, right? But not all of us are willing to stick with it and do the work. We want but we're not willing. So the first place to look is 
One, is it time for you to stop running around, taking courses, reading books? Because reading a book, has, does that have the same value as reading a book 40 times? Mm. Right? So I've read Thinking We're Rich 80 times. I've read lots of other books, but that is the one. It's study. It's not reading. It's actually applying the principles in everyday life until they become a habit and you don't even think about them anymore. Right. So that's one thing. It's, is it really time? Ask yourself the question, haven't I invested enough money and time? Right. Already. I have my own theories now and my own philosophy and my own way of doing things. And the other thing is to go back to see if you really still want it. You may not want it anymore. I'll give you a quick example of a good friend of mine. We used to meet for margaritas on Tuesday nights and just, just chat. Right. And, and she's an amazing woman. And all her life, or for years, she wanted to learn how to decorate cakes. Very different than if you knew her, right? So finally, she joins a local technical community college, and she signs up for cake decorating, right? I'm hearing about all of this every Tuesday, um, about that she's going to do this, and along with many other things. She goes out and invests at least $500 in cake decorating stuff. Who knew there were so many tips and bags and, oh, my God, I have no clue what this was all about. So the, she went to the first class, and then we met the next night. She said, Leslie, I got a problem. I said, what is it? She said, I don't know if there's something wrong with me, but I've wanted this for so long, and you know what? I didn't enjoy it last night at all. What's wrong with me? So what had happened is what she wanted, when she first wanted that, she was at a different level of awareness of her own potential. And so that want was still there, right? And she hadn't put it to rest. Here she is growing and doing just amazing things. And then when she, she actually stepped back into this other awareness and it didn't feel right to her, right? So sometimes that happens and you get to let it go rather than making yourself bad and wrong because, oh, you wanted this and you spent all this money. And by the way, my daughter-in-law is a cake decorator. So when she moved, I got all the stuff to give to my daughter-in-law, <laughs> right? But so, so those are the two things. One, if you love this stuff, it is, is it time to stop going and doing all these things and do something on your own? Because you have a message that only certain people can hear. This is not my quote. I know this has been said by a lot of people. But the way you describe what you're doing isn't the same as the way I do. So there are very special people on their way to you to hear your message. And if you don't share it, they're out of luck. The other piece is, really, do you still want it? And if you didn't, just sell it for intellectual property and start something new. Yep. I love it. I love right. it. All right. <clears throat> so let's lighten it up here as we wrap up. Okay. Let's say you had the ability, Leslie, to send everybody in the world a text message that they would see on their phone tomorrow morning. What would that message say? I love you. Beautiful. I think that's kind of what everybody wants at their core is to be loved, right? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I got goosebumps. How are we doing on time? <laughs> we're great. Well, we're going to wrap up right here. We've got a couple okay, more cool. questions. Okay, cool. Um, in the last five years, um, have you adopted a new belief, a new behavior that has improved your prosperity or overall quality of life? Yes. Three years ago, I wanted to have a train the trainer program. I wanted other people to be able to teach my material. And I had someone and it was too early. You know, like when things just don't work out. This year, I implemented a train the trainer program. I've been teaching it. And the, the, the habit is that every Tuesday night when I hold my mastermind studies, I stay on an extra half hour with two candidates who have been working this year to start 2019 teaching my material. 
So it's giving an extra half hour four times a month and the work that goes around that. It's a little bit of Kaizen, you know, doing that one extra thing every day. Yep. Only this was something every week. That, the fact that I have two people that are as gaga about this material as I am is joyous. Because, you know, it's hard to find someone who just loves this stuff the way right. I do. <laughs> so that would be it, is that I've re realized and, and then there's the other thing. Sometimes things sh that we want show up before they're ready. Mm -hmm. When they showed up again this year, I didn't give up. It was more robust. I had more to offer. I had redone my membership site and redone all the training videos. So while I had the idea three years ago, it just didn't work. So sometimes just listening to the universe and letting it go it doesn't mean forever. It will circle back around if you're meant to have this and if it's still top of mind. And my top of mind is to expand this work to people that, are, that want to listen to it and want to learn from it. So that would be it, that new thing. Okay. Uh, last question, really. Um, is there a mantra or an affirmation that you find yourself repeating constantly? Yes, I actually have um, seven Maven's Mind mantras that my mastermind uses, but probably the one that I came up with about 12 or 14 years ago that still is true today. I am the mirror of your greatness, and you are the mirror of mine. Mm, I love that. Thank you. That's powerful. That's powerful. So, Leslie, I got to say, um, you're an amazing person. I just Thank love you. you and who you are and what you represent and the the ripple that, you know, that you're making on our planet, not only with your two candidates, but all the people like myself that you meet along your journey and your process. You are just a... Yeah, you're an amazing person. I just want to say thank you for being you. But if somebody wants to connect with you, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? They can find me on Facebook and you will recognize this face. Um, or you can go to leslie-flowers.com, my website, and reach me that way. Well, thank you again, Leslie, uh, for being here. So my friend watching this, hopefully you got as many tips and pearls of prosperity as I have from this. And, you know, understand that, you know, studying successful people like Leslie is going to fast track you to create whatever it is that you want. And we have to be patient, but we have to be very intentional about what it is that we want to create. So uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you on our next interview, my friend. And remember this, you have a choice. So make it a better than terrific day and a prosperous one because you absolutely deserve it. Until next time. Bye bye for now.